Alright guys, Red here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Consolidated Outland Mustang series. We're going to be comparing all its variants and seeing some of their strengths and weaknesses and doing a little tour slash review along the way. This is part of a bigger series that we've been doing, so if you're looking for other comparisons, please check the YouTube channel playlist. If you have any suggestions that you'd like to see make the comparison list, please comment below. Consolidated Outland and its fan favourite Mustang spacecraft are the brainchild of so-called rebel trillionaire Silas Corner. Consolidated Outland is the end result of his lifelong interest, his attempt to build what he deems to be the perfect spacecraft. The Mustang is the ship Corner always wanted to build, a stylish, fast and low priced alternative to the RSI Aurora and Origin 300 series. The Mustang looks like nothing else in space and utilises over 50 unique alloys in order to keep weight down and allow for its mass production on a less developed world. Internally, the vast majority of systems come from the company directly, from the Consolidated Outland Magma Jet Engine to the Consolidated Outland Icebox P cooling system. Although the name Consolidated Outland is strongly intended to imply an alliance of distant worlds toward a noble technological goal, in truth Corner owns 100% of Consolidated Outland, no Mustang variant takes shape without his input and he has been known to appear without ceremony on the factory floor insisting that changes be made on the fly to in production spacecraft. And that should do for the lower section of this video. The Mustang range is often featured among the starter variants and given its price point can be very effective in terms of both utility and defence. The variants are the Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma and Omega. And before we start, this is the Mustang Omega. It was part of a promotion involving AMD graphics cards and is unfortunately not available, so we won't be covering it in this review. Which is a pity, because it looks like one hell of a racer, and that paint is just spectacular. Anyway, let's get down to the hangar and review some ships. And this is the Mustang Alpha. And we will treat this as the default version, so unless I explicitly say otherwise, then you can safely assume that all other versions are going to be the exact same. So for example, they all have this beautiful open cockpit design at the front. And this sporty racing sort of profile, you could say, is also the same across all variants. They have this size 3 turret on the nose, which is not removable, and can hold two size 2 hard points that can be swapped to whatever you like. There is also one size 1 hard point on each wing. The Mustangs generally don't come with any missile mounts either. That's with one very big exception, which we'll get to later on. It should also be said that the internal component sizes are all identical, so shield sizes and power plant slots are all level across the board. Also the armour has the same HP across all variants, although that may change as the game develops, so maybe check that depending on when you watch this video. The description for the Alpha reads, the Consolidated Outland Mustang Alpha is a sleek, stylish spacecraft that uses ultralight alloys to push power ratios to the limits, albeit sometimes unsafely, as it is inspired by Consolidated Outland CEO Silas Corner's cutting edge vision. And now, with the optional cargo carrier, you can have the Alpha's advantages without sacrificing carrying capacity. So the main differences for the Alpha, as we read there, is a cargo hold of up to 4 SCU and an internal inventory space of 6 SCU. And that's compared to the zero cargo or internal storage that the rest can carry, all except the Beta, which has 0.65 SCU internal storage. And we'll see why later. The Alpha has this unique little container at the back, which has its own cool little animation when it deploys. You obviously can store other things in here besides cargo, small deliverable boxes or drugs or even people could go in here, turning the Alpha into a very versatile version of the Mustang. It has a pretty cool cockpit opening and ladder animation and again the cockpit layouts are all identical across all versions. The cockpit itself, in my opinion, is one of the best in the game. There is very little obstruction here at all. We have four MFDs and the radar all on this one big panel here and it's all straight in front of your face so that you're not turning to look for any information. So access and layout and visibility is all a big thumbs up from me. What would you use this alpha version for? Well, 
probably not cargo running as the 4 SEU really isn't going to be worth your time but you can maybe run drugs in here or some smuggling maybe a bit of jump town definitely box delivery missions or you could even set yourself up as a taxi stick somebody in that cargo hold and obviously all the other jobs that just require a ship to get there like doing bunkers and stuff in the Alpha's case of course you could fill that little cargo hold with dead bodies and strip all the gear as well so with a bit of imagination the Alpha definitely plays out to be one of the more industrious versions you can buy for sure and given it has the second highest combat speed out of all the versions it's still going to be very capable of performing what is probably considered its primary function which is doing bounties. Next up is the Mustang Beta. The description reads, The Consolidated Outland Mustang Beta is a variant of the Mustang civilian spacecraft. Classified as a touring and exploration ship, the Mustang Beta has extended range compared to the Mustang Alpha and features a series of updates to appeal to cost-conscious explorers. The Beta ships with the hardened Tarsus Leaper jump engine as well as a comfortably appointed rear cabin. This version's main selling point is the neat little trick it can pull off if you get out of the pilot's chair the wrong way. It's got a whole bed and kitchen and bathroom here, and although it's pretty basic in style, given the size of the ship this is actually pretty well outfitted and comfortable. It has some internal storage as well for keeping your guns and armour secure. Definitely the version you should go for if you plan on living out of your ship. Aside from that though, there are a few obvious disadvantages when drawn against the Alpha. You can still do box missions and ferry people around, but it would just be slightly more of a pain getting things in and out. Definitely not impossible though, and you can still do all the bounties the Alpha can do. A massive advantage the Beta has though is that it has a hydrogen fuel capacity of over 1 million compared to the 60 or 75,000 of the other versions and a quantum fuel capacity of 700 compared to 573 in all other versions. So for exploration and staying out in the field the Beta is the winner hands down. The next version is the Delta and as you can see it's the military variant. Its description reads the consolidated outland Mustang Delta is the militia variant of Mustang. While it may not be able to go toe to toe with some of the military specific ships, by reinforcing the Mustang's already strong hull construction with consolidated outland's own line of cavalry class mass reduction armour, the Delta has a reduced cross sectional signature that evens the playing field. Now, this version has nothing the other two have. No cargo, no internal storage, no kitchen, and cute cosy little bed. As you can probably guess, this version is for when you need to absolutely, positively, kill every motherfucker in the room. So, while it has the same non-removable size 3 nose turret, with the two size 2 removable hardpoints, it then has one size 2 hardpoint on each wing, which is obviously a step up from what's on the Alpha and Beta. On top of that, it has a size 3 Jericho XL rocket pod on each wing, which dumb fires 36 unguided size 1 rockets. It has the second highest top speed and manoeuvre speed out of the variants and definitely makes for a deadly bounty hunting version. And it does this, I must say, very, very well. Up next is the Gamma. Its description reads, the consolidated outland Mustang Gamma is the racer variant of the Mustang. It has a larger power plant and an extra main engine, which gives the ship smooth acceleration and power on demand. As this is primarily a racing ship, some things have been lost. The nose turret is gone and been replaced with some kind of air intake. The wings have retained the two size one hard points and it comes with a competition spec grade A power plant, which is nice. But aside from that, nothing else has changed. 
It has by far the highest combat speed and top speed and roll speed by quite a decent margin. It's generally perceived as a great all round racing ship. Good for Atmo, good for space and a great price too. But due to its size and cross section it's not something used a lot in the racing community. Simply because if you clip one of those wings it's game over. But it is a pretty cheap way to try things out and with racing missions officially added to the game it could be a nice little racer to keep around. We should speak a bit about manoeuvrability next. Across all variants, whether in space or atmosphere, the manoeuvrability is outstanding. And by that I mean among the top ships in the game. Not far behind an arrow, plus you've got that open cockpit view making things even more impressive and distances easier to judge. Obviously, depending on what you would like to do in the game will determine which version you choose. But the short version is the Gamma Racer leads, followed by the military version, the Delta, closely followed by the Alpha, but they all handle very, very well, and it would be difficult to perceive the difference unless you're one of those sick Jedi pod racer dudes that are constantly lapping us on the racetracks. Just a little quick look at the speed stats. Mustang Gamma is at the top there for SCM speed, then Alpha, Beta and Delta. Max speed, obviously it's the Gamma, then the Delta, Beta, then Alpha. Pitch and Yaw, they're all the same apart from Beta, which is a tiny little bit worse and roll the gamma takes it then the delta then alpha then the beta there's a hydrogen capacity there obviously the mustang beta is well out in front delta has a bit of an advantage as well and also there's an em ir and cs signal reduction on the delta variant as well for pve bounties you could go all the way to very high risk targets with this ship obviously that would be a lot easier with the Delta variant and gradually harder if your version has less and less weapons. You might struggle to get that high with the Gamma for example, but again it's just so nimble that it's very hard to hit. In terms of PvP over on Avenger 1, who if you didn't know is the resident PvP guru, you should check out his channel. He puts the Mustang and all its variants into a B tier. And it's quite a strong B tier at that, so not the best for PvP, but you could do a lot worse and it all depends what you find yourself up against. Overall, my impressions of the Mustang are pretty varied. There's clearly no one ship does all here. Each version seems pretty intent on carving out its own little groove and brandishes its own particular skill set. I'd say if you knew what you were going to be getting up to in Star Citizen and were dead set on wanting something for bounties or small delivery missions, I'd pick up the relevant version of the Mustang, like the Alpha or Delta over something more general in the same price range, like the Aurora. The Aurora is more like a Swiss army knife, whereas the Mustang is definitely a scalpel. Whatever version you do choose though, at its core it's a fighter. So your choice is a fighter and what else? Alpha is a fighter plus carry capacity. Beta is a fighter plus bed. Delta is a fighter plus fighter. And the Gamma is half a fighter plus a racer. It's safe to say that the Mustang is a very solid and capable little ship. But it's also a bit more than that. It's got a bit pizzazz about it. It's got some extra coolness there. It is a very nice looking ship. It is very enjoyable to fly and fight in. If I was to give it a score, price to performance out of 10, it would probably be actually around about a 7. Maybe slightly less. And that's only because it doesn't do everything in one ship because you have to pick a version that would undertake a pretty specific role that kind of lets it down a bit as say compared to the Aurora and for use as a starter ship that's okay I guess if you know what it is that you're going to be doing and some people might be inclined to score it a lot higher if they know whatever they're going to be doing involves shooting things for example but it's definitely won me over it's a lot of fun to get down in the canyons and skim across the planet surfaces and stuff. It makes for a great screenshot as well. The screenshot factor is high on this one. As far as an upgrade path, I would just go all military. That's probably overkill, but until the game's balanced a bit better and we can start making some effective use of stealth, etc. Then I would just military spec it, but I would definitely go with the Atlas Quantum Drive, just for getting around. Weapons loadout, right now, laser repeaters would probably be your best bet. Although there has been some changes to ballistics recently, and it looks like there's more coming, so maybe double check that, or have a mess around and see what works for you. 
And that's it, that's the Consolidated Outland Mustang in all its glory. Obviously don't just take my word for it, if you're planning on purchasing this shit, in game or otherwise. Definitely have a look at some other reviews, make sure you've got a nice rounded picture. But this is definitely one of those fine examples in Star Citizen of a small ship overachieving well above its price point. And that's all for this video. Remember like and subscribe if you feel that way inclined. Remember there's a Patreon. 07 guys.